Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking another look at a large vanilla ship. Now there's no mods on this ship at all, and it's a perfect survival specimen. Now this ship itself is the Druid 2 by Alloy Cat on the Steam Workshop. There'll be a link in the description, and I'm going to show you some of its features. We'll work our way around the exterior of lovely curves and sorts of definition he's added in by changing the colours of different blocks in different areas, and then we'll go inside and see what the heart of this ship is like. Now if we start at the front, something quite interesting about this survival ship, he's added some hydrogen thrusters to the front. Now he's not put them on the back, and the reason he's put these on the front I believe is to make it so it has an incredible stopping speed, so we can reverse out of combat as fast as he got into that sticky situation. And to complement that, we've got this quad rocket launcher with a nice little spotlight in the middle. Very nice indeed. Now if we work our way down the side, you can see we've got some of the turrets. It's not overly turreted up this, it's just got enough, and each of the turrets are recessed so are added protection for them but obviously this does affect the arc that they can actually fire as we work our way down the side you can see we've got some windows that view into the hangar bay and above that we've got some rocket launchers on the side so he's got an idea of maybe he'll be doing some broadsiding with this ship and i like that idea i like that idea a lot now if we proceed a little bit further back you can see we've got more of the outline of the engine this one is less rounded and more squared but with very sharp aggressive curves you can see we're heading to this extra engine bay on the side for very large thrusters and then we come to the back we've got another set of protected thrusters on the back and for a survival ship it's very important to keep your thrusters protected and that's why he's recessed many of them inside the hull and it just makes it look that much beautiful you can see here we've got the slope that works along the back we've got that rocket launcher on the back and then it curves up to the secret entrance and on the sides we also have more rocket launchers and if i curve myself down to the bottom and actually see we've got the engine bay, we've got some more struts, more Gatling guns, and then we've got the hangar bay as well. So from the outside, it is a very nice looking ship, and it looks quite compact. So how is he fitted into the interior? We'll head inside. So what's quite cool about this ship is the entrance is actually hidden here at the back, and you're going to feel this is quite breathtaking. You just head down here. It feels like a normal ship entrance. He's not used the advanced doors. We hit this system here, and this changes the airlock pressure, shuts that door, says it's red, changes the air pressure so if you can see oxygen non-existent it will process through the system turn the oxygen to high so we can take a helmet off now and proceed into here and just look how cool this is we've got these green displays on both sides this is what i call a proper sort of command and control room a proper cockpit for a pilot a bridge of a ship so you can see we've got the cargo space available on the next one we've got power stats so the captain could quickly look around hop off his seat see what's going on you can see if his gatling guns have gone offline are they out of ammunition and he can uh, apply his crew to actually go and fix that and that's what this whole room is about controlling the ship in the best way you've got local time up there he's also got the date navigation jump drive exploration he's got four jump drives he's also got the backup you see he's got the exploration emergency navigation and backup so he's labeled it all really well and that's what really excites me a well-planned ship is definitely have some cool ideas ingot summary on that one and then to this one we've also got component summary so you can quickly reference these charts and see what sort of supplies you've got aboard your ship very cool indeed as we head up to here you can see the bridge he's got a very simple view and this protects the cockpit and the captain himself because he's not got too much glass you can't really shoot into it you've got lots of armor above and it looks like he's reinforced it along the roof as well. What's wrong with this really nice lighting poles? I've seen these lighting poles before in other ship designs when they just simply get a pole and they put the light on the end. But it does really add a lot of effect to the design. Anyway, let's head downstairs. So just down here below, we have a quick access cryo bed. So if you do go AFK, if you're on the bridge, you can quickly hop into here and you'll be safe and sound. And off to the side, we've got these two little port doors that lead us down into the med bay on that side and we've got a spare room now when it comes to building a survival ship you'll be amazed how many people don't leave spare rooms because when you're exploring different areas you soon realize that you need a room for something else just to achieve that objective for the day so you can see that's there and if we proceed back down here we're actually entering underneath the ship into the maintenance area we'll turn our lights on so it's a little bit dark on here we've got the gyroscopes we've also got the timer blocks down here and in here we have the reactor rooms not very accessible because they're behind the glass but i guess you could just grind that way you can see the reactors there and we've got four in total as well as the programming blocks that are probably running all the systems on the bridge so you can really imagine someone running down here and fixing things up accessing them terminals and getting reactors back online applying different power so having a proper engineer down on the lower decks so i've just worked my way back up from engineering and you can see we've got the med bay here on the left we've got two additional cryopods for more crew members and we also have a med bay here now this med bay is in the center of the ship and i do recommend having more than one med bay but this is the only one on board so it's a little bit risky but at the same time it is in a very protected area 
Now if we head down here, we enter into the sort of cockpit of the hangar. So from here you can control hangar operations. So this is pretty cool. You can actually see that hangar door start timer. You can see we access that. The lights are now flashing down there. Maybe we've got a spectator camera. We do. You can see we can actually turn down here and the hangar door below is activating with a beautiful show of lights and array so people don't go and walk down and fall down the hole into outer space. So you can see the hangars on the bottom half of the ship as well. So you're not really exposing too much when you're throwing your fighters out into battle. You've not got a massive door in the front where people can shoot in. Just on the bottom, nice and neatly tidy away. Anyway, we'll access the side airlock. So we'll go back to my person in the cockpit and we'll head around the side. So we've got two more further cockpit, uh, cockpits. Not cockpits, what am I saying? And then we can open these up. We can press exit on the keypad. That door will then seal up. You can see it's flashing red. It then will turn green. And we should be able to flick over. These doors are a little bit slow. So if it was like, guys, rush to the fighters. I can just imagine some elevator music being played in this room. As you're waiting for these very slow doors to open. By this time, either everyone's dead outside. And you open the door. And it's just a wrecked hangar. The front of the ship is ripped off. Well, you can see we've opened up into this area. And that's where our fighters would be waiting. So just a really cool ship. We've got here at the front, we've got one connector here and one connector at the back. So you can work on ships. There's no real maintenance sort of utilities in here. There's no welders, no grinders. So I'm guessing this is more of a ship where you've got everything ready. You just put it aboard from your base and head out. But anyway, it was a really interesting ship to have a look at. And hopefully it's inspired some of your builds as well. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And if you want to see this ship, check it out in the description below.